Today I'm gonna talk a little gouache at ya. Washer gouache. Washing gouache. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Hello minders, welcome back to the Mind Watercolor. And today we're gonna talk about gouache. Now I have been collecting gouache samples for probably about a year. All different brands. Really about as many artist grade brands as I could get a hold of. I thought it'd be useful for you, but it's also my curiosity. I just had to find out more about how these different brands compare. And I'm seeing brands I haven't tried that I really just wanted to try. So this episode today is really for me, but I also thought it would help you. I needed to put these kind of in a hierarchy. I needed to decide what I wanted to use, what I felt like were my favorites, which had the characteristics that intrigued me, and I hope you will like that information too. So with the help of my trusty partner, Reese, we've gathered together actually eight different brands. I'm gonna rank them based on how they impressed me or didn't impress me, as the case may be, and maybe it'll help you decide if you're looking for a gouache to invest your money in. So what was your favorite? Yeah, that's my favorite too. And we'll save that reveal for the end. Did you have a favorite color? Oh yeah, that was awesome. It was minty fresh. Are you eating paint again? All right, so there's a lot of gouache out there, but just a few criteria that I tried to follow. I decided to stick with well-known major brands, ones that I felt at least would be considered artist-grade gouache or pro-quality gouache. I didn't get into off-brands or new kids on the block, new types of gouache or lesser-known brands that have come on the scene lately. So most of these brands, you're going to recognize as familiar names in the fine art industry, especially where watercolor is concerned. For the most part, gouache comes in tubes. Although there is this one set here that I reviewed and will be in the rankings by Karen Dosh, and it was a pan set. Now there also seems to be two designations in gouache, Designer squash and artist squash. For the most part, designer squash is aimed at the design market. The most notable of these is Winsor Newton. Winsor Newton has been making squash for decades. In fact, this is a pretty old tube from my stash. It's still surviving, but it's probably 20 years old at least. But designer squash is generally used in the design industry. It produces flat, velvety colors, and not just used for painting subjects and doing paintings and renderings of subjects, but also for what you might consider more flat graphics, logo design, package design, mock-ups, stuff like that. I think now with digital, it's probably less so in the design industry. Designer's gouache has been aimed at those markets. You know, fashion illustration, cartoon and comic illustration, things like that. Now the other designation is artist gouache. And I'm starting to see this more within the last 10 years or so. Now artist gouache obviously is aimed at the fine artist. In the design and commercial art industry, a lot of Illustrators use gouache. Quite a few, actually. That's not new. That's been happening for decades. But a lot of the gouache makers will title and label their product as artist gouache. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is designer gouache will sometimes kind of take liberties with is the light fastness because it is used in, a, in an industry and with uh, artists, professional artists that are not as concerned about light fastness. You'll see a lot of those parameters kind of thrown out the window. Instead, they go more for vibrance and bright colors. Artist squash tends to do the opposite. They tend to look at their supplies and provide supplies that are archival, light fast, and permanent. Now, you can't absolutely rely on these naming conventions, so take the warning that you need to check them out. You need to check out the light fastness if that's a concern to you. And I'll be talking about this as I look at some of these brands. Let's start off with an honorable mention. And that's Karen Dosh. This is the only group that will be included in this review that is pan-based. Now this gouache performed very, very well. And the only reason it's in this uh, honorable mention category is that I believe this is a designer squash. And not many of the colors are light fast. I had a lot of trouble finding any light fast information on this. It's billed or labeled as a designer squash and not an artist squash. The price point kind of put it in a designer gouache or lower cost gouache category, which usually means it's not using artist quality pigments. And so I wouldn't trust this as an artist quality gouache for permanence and light fastness. 
But let me tell you, it, for sketching, it really performed well. Uh, really velvety lay down, nice brilliant colors, great opacity. And those are primarily, other than the artist archival and permanence ratings, those are primarily the top characteristics that I judge these by. So I put this as an honorable mention, not as a top quality artist level gouache, but as one that if you want to experiment with gouache, these are not really very expensive and they perform very well. I've actually done several sketches with this gouache and have been very impressed. Now coming in the number six spot in my top ranked gouache was Da Vinci. Now before I get into Da Vinci, let me qualify this review by saying I only have these five colors. I just bought the basic mixing set, which were the primaries and a white and a black. However, even these few colors I felt were enough to tell that they were very transparent. If you compare these to most other gouache, now there seems to be two schools of thought in manufacturing of gouache. And that's where the darks or a lot of the deeper jewel tone colors are semi-transparent or transparent, but there is an opaque white basically to mix with those colors to make them more opaque and more gouache-like. What the purpose of that is, I'm not sure because you can do that with regular watercolor. And while I like, I kind of adhere to the idea that I like my deeper colors to be transparent or semi-transparent and then I add the white. As a matter of fact, I will mix white with regular watercolors quite frequently rather than use gouache. I still think that if you're gonna create gouache colors and tubes to market to gouache artists, you'll want some opacity more than this in your regular colors. So I'm ranking this six because I, I believe it's a very high quality gouache or paint, had very high pigment loads and payouts, but they were very transparent as gouache goes. And for a lot of gouache painters, for a lot of traditional gouache painters, this is gonna be probably an issue and they probably are going to be disappointed. I'm thinking about ordering a few more colors just to see how that plays out across the brand. But for right now, that's the biggest drawback I saw to Da Vinci, is just a less than traditional opacity. But Da Vinci, as you probably know with regular transparent watercolors, is a very high quality brand. So if you don't mind that these are not perfectly opaque, then these may be the thing. Even the white though, to me, was a little bit weak in the transparency area. So. It's primarily the reason for giving these a number six ranking. All right, so in the number five spot, my Mary. A really very fine gouache. Was very impressed with my Mary. It had a few consistency issues. There was some streakiness, some modeling in the washes where they didn't lay down perfectly even. And there was some separation in the tubes from the binder but a nice generous 20 milliliter tube size. And most all the colors in this set that I tested, this 12 color set, were artist quality uh, light fastness and permanence. So I would consider it an artist quality gouache. But very nice opacity. Here's the modeling I'm talking about. And I don't know whether that's just uh, some of the binder separation problem and not getting enough pigment. But there just seem to be a few inconsistencies that way in the color. Here it is again in the yellow and even in the white. There was some of that modeling. Very bright, vibrant color loads and payouts. So I consider this a top quality gouache. But we've got some better ones coming up. All right. In the number four slot. My beloved M. Graham. Now, if you've watched my channel for long, you know that M. Graham is my favorite transparent watercolor. I just love it. I think there are lots of great transparent watercolors out there, but I just returned to M. Graham time and time again. So I have to say, it was pulling at the heartstrings a little bit for me not to give or try to give M. Graham gouache a top rating. And I'll also have to say that I really believe, uh, for me, they do qualify as a very top rated brand of gouache. There was only one thing holding me back from giving these a, a higher rating, and that is that some of the deeper colors, as we mentioned with Da Vinci, were more transparent. 
but it was only in the deepest colors. And actually, given my preferences with the way I use gouache, this is not a problem at all. You can see here, in the lighter colors, I thought the opacity was pretty good. As you get down in here deeper, less so. Mainly in the very deepest colors. Not a problem at all for me, and probably not a problem at all for a lot of artists, but some traditional gouache artists are going to want all of these colors to have some degree of opacity. Nevertheless, a really, really top quality gouache. And I did think the white was lacking a little bit in opacity compared to what you're going to see is my three, two, and one rankings. But a great gouache. One of the best I've ever used. Now, I almost didn't review this one. I almost didn't put it in there because Windsor Newton is traditionally known as a designer squash. And I know for a fact that there are a number of colors in here that are not artist grade in permanence. But the more I got to thinking about it, the more I thought, well, let me check it out. And I had already bought so much gouache. I didn't think that I had enough surviving tubes to review. I didn't really want to go out and buy a bunch more. For one thing, uh, Windsor Newton Designer's Gouache is extremely expensive. It's one of the pricier brands of all. And as you can see, my tube stash is quite old. You can see probably several generations. This is actually one of the newest tubes here. This Naples Yellow. Tubes like this go back at least 25 years. But I'll be honest with you, in a lot of ways, Windsor Newton probably deserves the top spot. There is not a gouache out there that will give you a more perfect, flat, opaque, velvety lay down. And to me, it is the quintessential gouache in the way it performs. It's just really, really hard to beat. And after going through this and comparing this to the other brands and reminding myself of that, I immediately ordered four or five colors to replace ones that had kind of gone bad or hardened up from years of neglect. Now you're probably saying, well, Steve, if it's that good, why isn't it number one? Well, one main reason, and that's because so many of the colors in the line are not permanent or light fast. However, I did find that going through their color list, they do have enough. They do have several. Enough of a selection of light fast permanent colors that you could make this a true artist gouache. You could have a collection of Winsor Newton artist quality gouache. And one of the things that's always bugged me about Winsor Newton still bugs me, and I still find it today, is there are separation issues from the binder. So you may open a tube of Winsor Newton designer's gouache and get nothing but binder at the top. It happens to me a lot. And a number of the colors that I still have are still that way. That and the fact that Winsor Newton is probably one of the most expensive gouache out there. And here's a brand new tube. I mean, this brand new tube of Naples yellows and you have nothing but a pool of binder on top. So performance wise, these guys deserve to be in the number one slot in manufacturing consistency and price and in a total color permanence or artist grade permanence across the line. I rate these guys number three. So who made it into that number two slot? Holbein. Now I'll confess, this was a real surprise. Not because I don't think Holbein makes good paint, but I, I guess maybe because I just don't know enough about Holbein. I bought this little sample set, and I was a little bit cheesed off at how tiny this sample set it was. I mean, these are five milliliter tubes. I mean, come on. However, as I started testing them, I was really, really pleased. I mean, this is a top quality gouache. And it's an artist gouache, an artist quality gouache. Most of the colors in this set were excellent or very good light fastness. Most of them being excellent. But painting with it, painting with it was just an absolute joy. Really great opacity, really fantastic velvety smoothness. There was very little I could complain about. A little bit of streakiness, some of the dark colors. But darker colors, you almost always end up mixing with white. So yeah, Holbein really impressed me. And I think it had those qualities that a gouache aficionado is going to love. Highly recommend Holbein Artist Gouache. And while I kind of complained about these cheesy little 5 milliliter tubes, 
it's a great way actually to get into testing these if you want to because this was not a very expensive set and if you don't have gouache you can get a whole 12 color set without spending a lot of money on tubes all right drum roll please what did i think was the top quality gouache Schminka, the Haradam gouache now they also make an academy gouache which I'm assuming is student grade. This gouache impressed me in just about every way. And I guess in a lot of ways you would come to not expect anything else from Schmincke. But it had the qualities I think a traditional gouache artist is gonna want. Excellent opacity, fantastic, flat, velvety lay down, very consistent. I didn't have one single tube that separated in the ones that I had. Really found very little to criticize about it. Highly opaque white that really stuck out. There was a little bit of streakiness in a couple colors, but you find that in literally every single brand. But overall, just more of the qualities that I expect to see or would hope to see in a high quality gouache across all the colors that I tested. And then there's the artist quality characteristics like light fastness. Basically the same qualities that you come to expect from a Schmincke watercolor, transparent watercolor. Great permanent light fast pigments, excellent manufacturing consistency, smoothness, texture, opacity, and lay down. You know what an artist supply as you test it excites you and the characteristics you see start to excite you. You know you've got a high quality product. And it just kind of makes you anxious to get it out and use it. Now I also did a separate test of white. I have mentioned this sort of as an aside in a lot of my watercolor videos. But if you're wanting to get into gouache or just try gouache, the best way to start and do that is just to buy a white. Just buy a high quality white. The reason is because you can mix that with a color, a transparent color, as I mentioned in some of those. And you can essentially get a gouache. It's a great way to see if gouache is what you like without buying a lot of colors. These are the six that I ranked plus the uh, honorable mention here. All of these rated pretty well with white. Uh, da Vinci was fairly weak and had a very kind of mottled, inconsistent lay down. I did get a little modeling in my Mary. It had excellent opacity. These top here, these top four, and they're not in the same order I ranked them, but uh, they were pretty nearly the same. And there is some human error in getting the consistency quite the same. I mean, look at the Holbein, though. Holbein just had this beautiful, opaque, white, velvety lay down. M. Graham was comparable, I thought. There was a little bit of modeling in the Schmincke. But in other tests I did, it's actually pretty smooth. So... It's hard uh, when you're testing these colors to get all of the variables the same, like the amount of water added to the paint. But I wouldn't be afraid of using any of these whites. Uh, might shy away from the Da Vinci, personally. Right now my money would be on one of these top four. And any of these mixed with a watercolor would give you some really nice gouache colors, especially an artist grade watercolor, which has a really high pigment load. So that's just an aside. thought I would share that with you. All right, everybody, I hope you found that information useful. I'm probably not going to get into doing a sort of gouache 101 or how to gouache for beginner kind of things just because there are so many of those tutorials on YouTube, and I hope you'll go and check those out. And I've picked some that I think you will particularly enjoy. They're by professional artists who paint with gouache on a regular basis or experienced gouache painters, I will put their links down below in the description. And I just don't really feel like right now I want to redo that kind of beginner gouache tutorial. It's being done by so many and being done really well. So I want to share those links with you in case you're wanting to learn more about how to paint with gouache. I will be doing some gouache painting on my channel from time to time. And so you'll have those that you can look at and see how I do what I do. But I hope you found this information useful. And thank you everybody so much for watching. Thank you so much patrons for making all this content possible. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.